What is repentance? Is God's love and mercy, grace and forgiveness inclusive or exclusive? Is God's promise of rest limited to a select few? Jonah repents and personally receives God's love and mercy, grace and forgiveness firsthand. However, we discover that on the contrary, Jonah thought that these gifts were exclusive. He seemed to have thought they were limited to a select few. Apparently, Jonah was under the assumption that the opportunity to rest was not available to the people of Nineveh, even if they repented and changed their evil ways. This is part four of a six part series on running away, but still restless. Our key text is found in Jonah 4, 11, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it says, and should I not pity Nineveh, that great city in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left and much livestock. That's Jonah 4, 11, the New King James Version. Our title for part four is Mission Accomplished. Compared to other cities or towns in Israel, Nineveh was a big city. It is described as an exceedingly great city that takes three days to travel the extent of it. Nevertheless, God had given Jonah the responsibility of going throughout the city to warn the people that if they did not repent, that is turn away from their evil practices and start doing good, the city was doomed to destruction. How does these evil people respond to Jonah's preaching? We find the answer in Jonah 3, 1 through 10. And I'm reading from the clear word translation. And it says, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time saying, go to Nineveh, that great city of Assyria and proclaim the message that I've given you. Jonah now did what the Lord said and made his way to Nineveh, the capital of Assyria was a large city. It would take three days to walk all its streets. He went up and down the streets proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be destroyed. After only the first day of preaching, the word spread throughout the city, the people of Nineveh repent. The people of Nineveh believe what God said. So they declared a fast. And everyone who heard about it, from the least to the greatest, put on sackcloth and repented of their sins. When Jonah's message reached the king, he got up from his throne, took off his royal robe, put on sackcloth, and also repented of his sins. Then he issued this proclamation to the people of Nineveh, by order of the king and his officials, no one is to eat or drink, not even the animals. No one is to feed them or give them water for a whole day. Let everyone fast, man and animal alike. Let all the people call upon God. Let them give up their wicked ways and stop their violence. Maybe the God of heaven will be merciful to us. Perhaps he will re relent and we will not have to die. When God saw that the people had done what the people had done and how determined they were to turn from their wicked ways, he had a compassion on them and he decided not to destroy the city as he had originally planned. While walking the city, Jonah proclaims God's message. He says, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be destroyed. Jonah's message must have been on point. 
Though the details are not given, it is clear that the message is received and the people of Nineveh as a whole believe Jonah's words of warning. In ancient times, it was customary in the Near Eastern culture for a decree to be declared by the king of that city. Thus, the king of Nineveh put out a decree, which would have been in today's terms an executive order, declaring that everyone, everyone, including the animals, had to fast and mourn. Now, how do animals mourn? The text doesn't say. However, to show symbolically how serious he was, the king steps down from his throne and sets in the dust on the ground. In Jeremiah 25, 5, and Ezekiel 14, 6, and Revelations 2, 5, we find what true repentance is. Jeremiah 25, 5, the New King James Version says, they said, repent now every one of his evil way and his evil doings and dwell in the land that the Lord has given to you and your fathers forever and ever. It's turning away from evil ways, evil thinking and evil doing and turning to the Lord, the God of heaven and earth. Ezekiel 14, six says, therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, repent, turn away from your idols and turn your faces away from all your abominations. It involves turning away from worshiping idols, that is false gods, and turning to the true and living God. And then Revelations 2, 5 says, remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the first way, or else I will come to you quickly and remove the lampstand from its place unless you repent. It means to stop practicing evil, stop worshiping false gods and return to the true and living God, the creator of the universe. So what does it mean to repent? It means to feel or express sincere regret or remorse about one's wrongdoing or evil acts and a turn away from them and start worshiping the true and living God. While Jonah preached, God's Holy Spirit worked on the hearts of the Ninevites. Although the Ninevites did not have the benefit of all the stories of God's tender leading that the Hebrews or the Israelites had, they still responded to him in a positive way. They were saying in effect, let's throw ourselves on God's mercy, not on our own accomplishments. Let us rely completely on his goodness and his grace. But strangely enough, strangely enough, Jonah, who has, has experienced God's grace for himself personally, seems to think that God's grace is something so exclusive that only certain people should have the opportunity to rest in him. So although Jonah accomplished his mission and the people of Nineveh repented, Jonah the preacher, God's messenger, wasn't so happy. How did Jonah respond? Find out in part four. <laughs> 